Good morning, everyone. For those of you that might not know, my name is Javier Jacobo. I'm typically a man of few words, but not today. Um, so today I'll be discussing about my why question. So why are people depressed? If you ask them flat out, they'll typically say to be very upset. While that is one of them, there's more to it, and I'll go to that right now. Before I continue on, please take the time to think or maybe write down any questions that's related to this topic because I'll be given a chance to answer them and I'll show you, share you my message knowledge on depression. Next, please. So depression comes in many ways. It can be the death of a loved one. It can be because you're typically alone. Or it can see, simply be because you failed a test. Next, please. So how would it affect you physically? Well, you'll typically isolate yourself. You won't have many friends, or you might not talk to them. You won't talk to your family. You'll basically be alone all the time. Next, please. And one of the things that can happen with depression, you're likely going to cut yourself. Why? Because they'll say that this hurts more than what I'm feeling inside. Next, please. And if depression gets worse, they'll most likely end their life, because they feel that suicide is the only way. While that might be one of the solutions, there are other options. Next, please. So according to KidsNet, um, most people su suffer from depression during their teenhood, and it can potentially go on through their adulthood if it's not taken care of any sooner. And it, suicide is one of the most common things in America, and one of the main ingredients for suicide is depression. I want to point out some fun facts that I learned today and yesterday. On most senior research projects, when they talk about their life story, depression had a role. Just goes to show that everyone at some point had depression. And I had two interviews. Unfortunately, they wanted to remain anonymous. The first person said, I asked them many questions about depression. And one of their interesting answers was, I was depressed because I never had anyone to rely on, and I never had no one to talk to. So her life got even more miserable. For the second person, they said that physical abuse was one of the reasons why she even started being depressed. And I can relate to that, actually. Next, please. Before I go on with my life story, I want to show you a quick music video that I really like. That, for me, it felt like it was me, literally. Please click that one. Have you ever felt left out of the group, excluded, given the boot when you knew you should have been a shoe in? Like some ancient druid was pursuing to ruin your life with a curse, but worse, he brought his whole damn crew in. And now it's high noon and you're a target to shoot it. This school's a battlefield, no wonder you're true it. They always look at you and they boo at what you're doing, and you go off like a bomb at the Olympics in Munich. Nah, you're just an extraterrestrial, less than respectable, you'll never get to get the girl. You're just a jester at the festival, I guess it's acceptable to peck your head with vegetables and kick you in the testicles and best of all let you know that you're a filthy dog and you'll never be best in show. So why the abuse? Cause all a bully needs is a fucking excuse. Planet Earth, I need a friend. Cause I'm on the outside looking in. I'm an alien. I'm just an alien. Feeling lost but never found. Till I find myself being pushed around. I'm an alien. Yes, I'm an alien. I'm an alien. I'm a... I'm going to add more detail to my life story. So my depression actually started during the start of my grade school. And I was very much bullied, as it explains there. For four years, I was abused, physically and verbally. Why? Because one, I was one of the very few students that took my education seriously. I actually tried. And they hated me for it. And they called me a nerd. And they called me a freak. Why a freak? Because I was different. I liked different things from others. I had nothing in common with them. So I was, so I was a threat to them and a target. And all this abuse went for four years, and what I did was isolate myself. I didn't talk to no one at the start of my freshman year, my sophomore year, and my junior year. 
senior year was when things started to change, surprisingly. I opened up more, and I talked to more people. But I realized that during these eight, seven years of silence, I made a big mistake, which goes to my solution. Please. I never talked to no one. I never looked for help. I never took therapy because I felt that it was worthless. There was no time. And I thought that the world was the same. Everyone was the same. If I talk to somebody, they're going to judge me again and they're going to bully me again. So I was too afraid to talk because I didn't want to go through that in high school. It was as bad enough as it already was. But that's when I realized that no, in reality, no one is the same. They're all different. There's going to be cruel people, for those of you that are oppressed and can't talk. But at the same time, there's going to be nice people. People that will treat you as a friend and they'll care for you. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that until my senior year. Uh, next slide, please. So I'd like to share with you one of my favorite quotes. Unfortunately, I didn't know who did it. One of them was, the loneliest people are the kindest. The saddest people smile the brightest. And the most damaged people are the wisest. How does this relate back, you might ask? Because when a person is isolated and depressed, this is how they look from the outside. And for those of you that know someone who is depressed, a few words is enough to change them into this. You talk to them, they'll show you their kindness. They'll give you a smile when you have conversations with them. And they'll be wise enough to know that you're a good person and they'll talk again. And it writes and repeats. When they're good and they get over their depression, they'll go back to others that are depressed. They'll talk to them. It'll be the same. They open up more. Because when you have a big problem, if you share it around with others, that problem becomes bigger. It's something you can get off your back. So next slide, please. So going back to what I said, would anyone be interested in asking any questions about depression? No one. That's all right. Uh, you. Are you going to open up when you go to college? That's what I intend to because I realize that I need to change my personality. I need to open up more because I realized that when I started talking again, <coughs> that depression that I had slowly started fading. Next, please. Oh, oh, you have another question? Question? Yes. So, like, what made you, like, what changed through your senior year? Senior year. I guess what I said before, open up to others. Like, I took that risk again, I guess, since it was the last year. What else could go wrong when I opened it up again? Anything else? Um, are you planning on majoring in, like, something that helps people who are depressed? Mm. I was thinking of doing therapy, but I'm still undecided. For mental therapy. Uh, that's my end of my senior research project. Thank you for paying attention.